overall the community um, at least understands kind of what our motivations are and, and where we're going and how we can work together. So that's really exactly what I hope we will accomplish here in the next now 28 minutes and 37 seconds. Um, in terms of, of just really understanding Twitter's platform. So I think we all understand as a uh, Twitter as a personal platform. Hey, folks, look at me. I've got something to say in 140 characters. Um, but you were, it seems sort of shifting the obviously goal of, of creating a platform uh, or a foundation for an architecture for a lot of different kinds of applications. Um, and uh, I guess we could start just simply with I mean, what is your view of Twitter as a platform and its relationship then with the developers who are building on top of it? I think it's a, it's a good question. I, I joined Twitter about a year ago. Um, and that was kind of the beginning and not really because I joined, but that was around the time where we changed from like the Twitter API to start thinking about it more broadly as a platform. Um, and a lot of people kind of interchange those words, but I think they mean two very different things. When we were an API, the company would say, okay, we're going to do something like this. And the, the platform team or the API team at the time would say, okay, we'll expose that as an API and we'll support the community using lists or retweet. Um, but we found that we, we think the power of the ecosystem is in people building these kind of varied experiences. So whatever mode you're in, if you're on your phone, you want to do SMS, or you're an advanced user, you want to use TweetDeck, different ways of consuming and creating content are really, really important to the success of Twitter. In order to do that, we need these varied experiences. Um, but relegating people to use the exact same APIs that we use to create Twitter.com doesn't allow for that. Um, so we've shifted over, you know, kind of especially at the beginning of this year, and some of the projects we announced at Chirp are talking about how do we build kind of more raw utility into the platform that allow for people in Twitter.com to be just kind of one implementation of that. But how do we allow for people to build kind of these more uh, innovative and, and uh, kind of powerful services on top of it that are different than just what Twitter.com would do? So, I think this is fair to say that the, the APIs today have allowed um, developers to experiment with, in some ways, a better Twitter. I mean, if you think about a lot of the applications that are available today, it's um, you know, how to, a better um, aggregated experience, this sort of thing, better UI, places that you know, we've talked about in terms of you know, other people enabling the, the APIs enabling other people's vision of the Twitter experience. Um, so the platform, though, that in the view that you have, I think, and what you just said is, look, let's take it to the next level. How do we create this or enable a whole raft of very specific experiences, applications, utility from this, this message router? That, yeah, core message. That, yeah. um, to do that, I think, uh, requires also a different relationship. You know, coming in and, and hacking the APIs is one kind of a, an opportunistic way to build a, a business, and maybe that gets purchased by Twitter and come, becomes part of the platform. Building a robust application to take advantage of this communication stream requires a really different relationship with the developers. So how are you thinking about um, and how are you demonstrating a shift in your understanding of the needs of the developer and what Twitter will do to help them build their businesses? So we, uh, yeah, it, it's a totally valid point. Early on, like the API is very simplistic. There's a simple resource for everything you did on Twitter. Um, but now that they're getting more and more complex, there's different ways to kind of mash up the content, different ways to curate, <coughs> content looks different in different formats. Um, we need to start supporting the community differently. A year ago, we were a team of like two and a half people. Um, we're still a very small team, but we finally have like developer advocates. We have partner integration people who are focused on kind of the big partners and helping them work with Twitter. Uh, the engineering team has grown to, uh, I think, six people now. Um, so a lot of it is just investing in the people and tools to help support them in the different ways that they need to use it. So improve documentation, you launch a new developer portal, start kind of being that beachhead um, for developers as they want to learn more about Twitter and how to work with it. Now we need to get better about, you know, more code samples, more documentation, all that kind of stuff to help kind of build the community out. And we're really lucky too that the community is a very engaged one. Uh, we're trying to find ways to build tools to kind of use that power of the community to help each other out because they actually have a lot better answers than we do a lot of the time. So we want to make sure that we just kind of facilitate them and get out of the way when we don't have to help. So what are, what are some of the best examples in your mind of, of applications built on the platform versus the API um, that you would hold up as examples for this audience in terms of, of how they might be thinking about building applications on, on top of Twitter? I, I think most people know, but StockTwits is still one of my favorites that it used. Twitter is kind of the, the basic kind of message bus below it, but they built this totally and, and kind of vertical experience on top of it. So this, you know, uh, river of data below it, and they kind of pull out the bits that really matter to them, and the experience is something that's totally different than Twitter. Um, and obviously that was kind of one of the early ones, and they really made it work in an environment that wasn't very suitable for that type of needs. Um, adding annotations in in the next month or so, 
I think it'll be a really big kind of step for us to allow the community to try and develop on top of that kind of core tweet component and then build these wholly kind of new businesses on top of it. Um, news agencies are talking about uh, for elections passing through a lot of the uh, electoral data within the tweet so the actual data doesn't have to be a static thing that lives on a page. It can actually move with the tweet itself throughout the network. Um, then we have to work with developers to kind of start exposing that and make it a kind of richer experience. So talk a little bit more about annotations. You, you first talked about it, I think, at, at, at Chirp, but what does annotations allow for a developer to do? Everything. <laughs> um, and for those of you at Chirp, the story is kind of the same, right? Like, we know metadata is powerful. It adds context. It adds different ways to slice up the content. Um, but we were always the ones, kind of the arbiters of exactly what got added. We'd have to figure out how to scale it, what exact feature was the most important. Um, and since the kind of beginning of the, the Twitter API, I know the company had been talking about adding this arbitrary metadata. Uh, we finally got to a place recently where the actual architecture, the, the service was at a place where we could allow that to happen. Um, we're doing a, a hack this weekend in Boston, and anyone who's remote can actually uh, kind of join in and work with an early preview of annotations. But the real kind of like high level concept is adding structured data to tweets. You know, 140 characters doesn't allow you to give a lot of meaning. You can actually pull some structured information out of that that allows you to say, I want to find all the videos across Twitter, I want to find all the audio across Twitter. So there's certain types of objects that we see um, already being kind of very successful within the network. Um, and I think that's going to be one level of it, but the second level is the part that we just don't know. We want to allow for that emergence to happen. Uh, you talk about like a running application, you'd be able to tweet out you know, exactly where you were, how long you went, but in the actual metadata of it, you could pass through all of the information, like the you know, GPS path you have, or the audio. Uh, you can pass through your average minutes and all that kind of stuff, so, or sorry, average miles. Uh, so we're really excited to see what people do, and I think we're going to try and give some guidance as to where we think part of it should go. Uh, but we want to allow for that emergence, because we think that's where the real power is. Well, one of the dangers in, in a developer community, for developers, is to, to invest a lot in development of an application or uh, extending, extending these annotations, for example, and then having Twitter kind of go there too. Um, so it, it's a sense of, Having, knowing that, that the platform is a partner, um, that it is open in the way you just described, but that it's also bounded. Mm -hmm. and, and do you have thoughts about how Twitter will sort of walk that line between let's put this out and uh, enable a community to really engage, um, help us develop it, let's experiment and find out together, um, but bound your own development activity such that the developers understand where the safe places are, where the open territory is for them to develop, to work. Yeah, I think um, it's actually something we know, and we've heard loud and clear from everyone, that it's a historical thing with platforms. Right? Like it, it, we aren't the first ones to deal with it. Uh, ours is probably the most recent, but it, it's happened since the beginning of OSs and, and platforms beyond that. Um, I think the key tenets for us is we, focus, we need to explicitly state who the audience is that we focus on and the things that we need to own as the core. Um, and then let people know as we start to figure out our roadmap, and you know, obviously we don't know six months out or anything like that, but as much as we can know, as much as we can give direction on where we're going, we try and be as transparent about that as possible. Um, but it's a balance because you also don't want to put a bunch of fenced out areas off in the future if you don't get there because they might be great areas of opportunity. Um, and other things like kind of discovery and search are such difficult tasks that no one company I think is going to win that. So, even though Twitter at its core is going to work on discovery, helping you find people in the right tweets, and it's not just going to be about you know running an exact timeline, that doesn't mean that like Google can't be great at it, and that Topsy and that Ellerdale and all these guys can't take a, a crack at the same problem with the same data and come up with totally different but possibly better results. 